Welcome to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Episode 1 Thoughts. Now, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode, and I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. There we go. Now, as usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by me, Rockstar, Screenwrite, Nerdist, Screen Crush. Yeah, that's better. And yeah, I, you know, on, on interviews and such, the people making the show said that we get to go home with these characters. And I really love that so far. I, this is, I'm really loving these Disney Plus Marvel shows. The, the getting more time with these characters that, I realize not everybody cared that much about Vision and Wanda, but but yeah, I you know I guess if I hadn't when I when I first saw Age of Ultron and by the end of the movie we have both Vision and Wanda as Avengers and the movie has Vision save Wanda's life, which is kind of a trope in comic books. If you, you know, a, a lot of the relationship started because the hero saved their loved one's life. And, which I'm not going to claim that that's not, you know, that's a little uncomfortable with the power, balance, power imbalance, but still. When I saw that, you know, immediately in my mind I went, they're going to have the two of them date, they're going to move to the suburbs, and they're going to have kids, and I love that storyline. I get that if you weren't thinking that while watching those movies, I could understand why you might not like their scenes. But anyway, really glad to see more, you know, Falcon and Bucky, and we see Falcon's family, and we see how Bucky doesn't really have, you know, he basically, excuse me, he, there's, there's not really anyone that he can, you know, he, he barely has anyone he can relate to. You know, he, so, so, and, and he's having trouble with the dating, and, yeah. Now, let's see, and I, you know, I, I saw someone point out that most of this episode really is, what are these characters like when they're not in, in action scenes? And we see, you know, Sam, he's, he, he is still dealing with, you know, in, in general, the show it, certainly this episode, and from what they say, more of the show, which I'm really loving for a mainstream show, it's going to go into veterans' issues, and issues that are, you know, that African Americans face, that white people don't face in America. And, and some that white people do face, but to a somewhat lesser extent than black people. Anyway, but, but yeah, I, you know, if you had told me, like, uh, well, I mean, Age of Ultron made a pretty good case for why scenes of them just hanging out would be compelling. But, yeah, I think if you had told me when, like, uh, let's see. Yeah, like, when, when, you know, when I first watched Iron Man and Captain America, if you had told me that I would really love seeing them spend time not doing superhero stuff, just being with people they care about, you know, in between fights, I, yeah, I might not have believed that it would be, you know, anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity for the MCU, and I feel like so far, they're really taking full advantage of that, they're, they're getting into a lot of stuff, the, you know, the, most of the stuff in this episode, how would they have found time for that in one of the movies, you know, even if, the the two of them were the main characters in one of the movies instead of you know they, they're basically always supporting players to to steve now and i really like that you know yeah the 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 one major action scene the the airborne action scene is the size of an mcu action scene you know it, it it used to be the tv and yeah that's the thing this isn't really a tv show they had way more time for this than for like a 24 episode per year kind of tv show you know 
But yeah, it's it's the size of an MCU action scene. Anyway. But yeah, clearly Falcon does not feel ready to take up the mantle. He doesn't treat the shield like it's his. He treats it like it's something expensive that a friend borrowed him. You know, the the yeah, look look at the the way he he puts it into the, you know, he's he's not we we know that Falcon has a certain amount of swagger, you know. He's he's not exactly ashamed of being a hero but he's not comfortable with the shield he's not it's not his you know and i really appreciate they they do such a great job like when we see steve hand it off and he asks how does it feel and falcon replies like it's someone else's and steve re responds it isn't it feels you know it doesn't feel like the scene stops part way through but when this show picks up after that it does still feel like you know I mean, considering that when we saw that scene, let's see, that was like 2019, right? So it's been, I'm not sure it's been two whole years, but it's been a year and a half at least. And it's still, it, it doesn't feel like, wait, what, why, wait, what's the deal with the shield again? You know, just, yeah. Holy crap. Just when I thought that maybe this episode would be, begin kind of low-key, we almost immediately go to the airborne scene that we've seen in the trailers. You know, maybe within the first minute of the episode itself. I realize it's like two minutes in, but we also have the uh, the logos, the Marvel logo, and you have the yeah, not logos. You have the Marvel Marvel Studios logo, and you have the title screen. And then you know, it's less than a minute of Sam, you know, uncomfortable with wielding the shield as his own. And yeah, it's it's an amazing action scene. And I'm, I'm really glad. I, I was a little tiny bit worried. I, I don't know why. The MCU makes so few mistakes. I don't know why I'm ever worried. But I, I was a tiny bit worried when they, you know, I, I think it was Anthony Mackie in an interview. He was like, you know, it has the budget of the movies. So the action scenes feel like they belong in movies. It's just, it's a, it's like it's two or three movies I guess, yeah, I guess it would be free, because apparently it's going to be like six hours. And this first episode was like 50 minutes, which, you know, I, th I think maybe the last episode of WandaVision was almost that long. But I, I'm really glad. I'm really glad they're not trying to force it into a shorter, you know, yeah. I love a lot about the show Alias, but sometimes it was like, wow, if they could have had just a few more, a few more minutes of this episode, they really could have. They, they didn't have to rush this particular thing, but, you know, but with this, yeah. But the, the, um, yeah, you know, I was a little worried that that, when he said that, that that meant it was just going to be nothing but action scenes, you know, but, yeah. And Falcon suit has been somewhat Captain America-fied, the colors somewhat resembling Captain America's uniform and the American flag. And Falcon's lands on Falcon lands on the planes. Very just cause. This entire bit, you know, if you, I, I think there's some, there, there's some inspiration there. Let, let, I mean, let's see, the first time, I think with Just Cause 3, they took some inspiration from, well, okay, think, I, they, if you've seen the trailer for the DLC, let's see, what's it called? Flying Stronghold or something. If you watch that trailer for that DLC for Just Cause 3 and you watch the scene in Captain America to, you know, near the end where Falcon is like dodge, you know, he's flying around, he's dodging like, what's it called? Uh, Anti-aircraft and, you know, he's firing his, his SMGs at targets and, you know, flying extremely fast and ducking and weaving. You can't tell me that the people... I forget the studio name, but the the people who made Just Cause 3, and especially for that, the, the Flying Stronghold DLC, you can't tell me that they didn't take inspiration from that scene in Captain America 2. And with the, 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 the first action scene in this episode, and with the, the there's also a, a uh, in, in the Black Widow, in the trailer, we haven't seen the movie yet, sadly, but you know, where we're, or they're also like skydiving and there's like some battling up there. I feel like that's the MCU, you know, like tipping their hat back in response is like, we see what you did and we appreciate it, you know, because 
it feels very just cause. And and that's you know if you play just cause three, I don't think I'm gonna bring up every single thing in in this scene, but you know that. And if you haven't played just cause three, pause this video right. Okay, no, but seriously, it's an amazing game. It's one of my favorite games. I'm not saying it doesn't have flaws, but I had such a blast playing it, especially with the wingsuit. And yeah, it just the the. Um, you 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 really can pretend to be Falcon when you're flying around in the wingsuit in that game, but yeah the the yeah I'm not gonna mention every single thing because it's it's there are so many it's it's wild and loving seeing Batroc again and they really made him cruel the way he talks about the hostage you know in in. In Captain America 2, he wasn't that cruel, but he was kind of, like, he, he didn't, what was it he said? He doesn't like standing still or something like, he doesn't, he feels exposed when, if they're not moving. And he, you know, taunts Captain America to the point where the two of them have a proper hand-to-hand -hand fight instead of Cap using his shield, which he did do a lot in the first scene of that movie first action scene of that movie. And Falcon makes some of the bullets ricochet that get shot at him, so the pilot dies, and it's it's a good I I like it when an action scene has people in a plane and the plane knows that that's just that's fun. That's you can't tell me that's not fun. And yeah, so the the I don't know if they're gonna like if that was just convenient writing because they wanted the pilot to die, or if it's going to be like a thing of Sam occasionally feeling like, you know, he's not like Steve, you know. If you look at Steve from the outside, if, if you know, the, the when we're seeing it from his perspective, we can recognize, but seeing it from others' point of view, he looks like he never makes a mistake a lot of the time. So maybe Falcon feels like, ah, oh, I... The, I shouldn't have ricocheted that bullet. I should have been more careful. And very cool fight between Bat Batroc. Almost certain it's Batroc. Yeah, and Falcon, you know, Steve could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, but Falcon can't. He's not superhuman, you know, so, so I appreciate that they have these little things where it's like he's doing things by himself now that we saw Steve do with the team at the start of Captain America 2, but he's, yeah, he's not Steve, so occasionally it doesn't quite go as well as, yeah. And and one of the, I, I forget, was maybe Dan Casey from Nerds.com, he said, you know, they, they're doing like a macho thing, they're both like trying to show off, and Falcon is doing it with the wings, which is a neat little, yeah. And yeah, really loving the whole wingsuit aspect. And, you know, one of the guys turns around, starts shooting at Falcon, so he has to like dodge. Just absolutely love it. And I, I saw the, there's a review of Civil War, a professional review that said the 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 airport battle feels like you're like this is what children playing with their action figures you know, they, that's what they envision when they're just, like, you know, bonking the action figures together and letting them fly through the sky and such, you know. I feel like that's also what we're getting here. It, it really feels like something that, like, a, a hyperactive kid that hopped on, hopped up on sugar could come up with for, for these characters, and I love it. And wingsuit and falcon. The, the, yeah, the guys in wingsuits and falcon has to carefully maneuver I forget what that, um, hmm, excuse me, I forget what that's called, I guess it's not a canyon, because it's too narrow to be a canyon, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, and, and again, you know, Falcon, the, there's a bit where he, like, the, I think it's the, yeah, the wings are a little too far out, so he's, like, they, they scratch against some of the, some of the rock, and, you know, he has to, let's see, I th yeah, I think he, he, Retracts them briefly and then falls and then spits them back out and then uh, yeah, uh, the opposite of retract, detract, 
tractor. He tractors them. And Falcon goes up against the helicopter. Yeah, very just cause. I'm loving it. And really enjoying seeing the new stuff that Falcon's suit and Red Wing can do. I, again, I, I'm, I'm afraid I forget who, actually might have been all of the different Easter egg videos, but, you know, they pointed out, Falcon now, so, sorry, Red Wing now responds to Falcon's verbal commands. You know, before, he had to get up the, the thing, you know, which is, you know, that's in, in Civil War, when, when he uses Red Wing to get rid of Spider-Man, and then, and, you know, Bucky's like, could have done that earlier, and he couldn't have, because he was fighting Spider-Man. He, he didn't have his hands free, but Spider-Man, not knowing about the thing Majig here, you know, he's he's used to this working out. You know, if when he captures people with their arms like this in the web, that means they can't keep fighting. You know, that's that's the, you know, but he didn't know. So, yeah. But here, he can literally do it with verbal commands. And and Red Wing will, like, give off these, like, beeps to, to acknowledge, like, like they can have, they can communicate, basically. And, uh, you know, several others have already compared it to, like, R2-D2 beeping. And, yeah, you know, Red Wing's red laser. I don't know if it's the same one that Tony used in several of his Iron Man suits. I mean, I guess hypothetically it could be because he is working for the government. It would make a lot of sense for the government to now have access to at least some of Stark's tech, even though he himself was not a big fan in the... You know, in the in the movies themselves, you know, I I could imagine that a lot of control over that and you know, some some of it is in the hands of Pepper, excuse me, and maybe some of it is in the hands of Rhodey, and Rhodey always was in favor of the the tech. You know, he he always thought the military should have access to that tech. I I think even in the first movie he says that, and then the second movie he actually takes the suit to the military, you know, so, and, and basically from that point on, he in his suit, you know, sometimes called War Machine, sometimes called Iron Patriot, they, excuse me, yeah, you know, work for the government, so I could imagine it might be I'm not sure it looks quite as powerful. The the one that Tony used was crazy powerful. Maybe maybe he can adjust it like Cyclops with the, the beams. And Falcon smoothly landed inside the helicopter. Very cool. And he's I, I think he just says like sup or something like that. But just like they, they look and he's just there. It's yeah. And yeah, they gave Falcon some really cool weapons. And Falcon dodges, you know, ah, what's it called? Locked missiles from this, the heavily armored helicopter. Just, yeah. Yeah, I, I do kind of, it's, it's pretty ridiculous that today, to make a big budget blockbuster action movie, you basically, like the amount of action and the scope of the action, you know, it's like today what makes a, uh, like, other than maybe something like Face Off, you know, other than that, 90s and 80s action movies, you you know, the amount of action there'd be in two or three of those movies, we now expect to be in just one of these movies, so, yeah. And Falcon, Falcon dodges the missiles, making one of them hit the helicopter really cool. And I was very relieved to see that that truck did survive. I really hope we get to see more of him on this show. I quite liked him in Captain America 2. And I think he's doing a perfectly fine job acting. I, I heard that he's not... Or, well, at least he didn't used to be an actor. He used to be like MMA or something. And a lot of people who are really good... Like, when it comes to action heroes, I guess not as much today, but it used to be you had... You know, someone who's good at fighting, or at least like a big bodybuilder or something, or you had a good actor, but you very rarely had both. And today, we, you know, we are getting both. A lot of, yeah, a lot of MCU movies. They're they're they they have the body, they have the fighting ability, and they have the acting ability. 
and I appreciate that they explained why Falcon went went in alone. They said it had to be subtle. Like if they sent helicopters or war machine or something, that was never going to be subtle. And you know, Falcon himself can be subtle. Although, yeah, also when he when he landed on top and then he's like looking and he's like, what is he like, dude? Take a picture. It'll last longer. What are you looking? Okay, he sees that. Oh, okay, one of the pilots dead. There's another pilot. Will make a lot of sense for him to be on Batrock's side. Okay, now I'm going, you know, going away from the window. Because if he spots me, this is going to be harder than it has to be. But he just, like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, you know, like the first time a kid sees the inside of a, of a plane, they're like, wow, what does this do and what does that, you know, maybe he's never been inside the cockpit of a plane before. I don't know. And we're told, you know, actually, yeah, briefly, some of the Easter egg people did suggest maybe the government kind of setting, is kind of setting up Falcon to fail. You know, the, the that they, they felt he should have had backup, he should have had, he should, you know, yeah, the, the way that the, the mission, you know, I don't know, I, possibly. But, yeah, I, I think maybe, you know, it didn't really, they didn't really bring it up in this episode, but I can imagine one of the next episodes, maybe it'll be Bucky. You know, someone will, like, he, he will have, to, Falcon will have to face the fact that he is making some mistakes now, you know. And, I mean, technically he made mistakes in, in the other movies as well, but usually Steve was there to help, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, oh, he's making mistakes, and I'm, you know, comparing him to a kid. I'm not saying because he's black. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not saying that Steve is better than, Steve the white guy is better than the black guy. I'm saying Steve had the benefit of the serum, and, you know, by the time he met Falcon, he had already gone up against the superhuman Red Skull, for example, and Hydra's forces were just you know, ridiculously powerful, and yeah, it's it's not about skin color, it's, you know, and, and certainly Falcon is a lot more, excuse me, you know, as over the course of the movies, he's gotten much, much better, excuse me, I, it will be less than 30 seconds, I promise. now and let's see so so yeah the let's see is the but but yeah you know Batrock if, if you just watch the episode and you you missed it or you don't remember you know Falcon went into the the helicopter grabbed ah Taurus I think they call him and then like I think he left a bomb on it or shot or maybe he would like he had red wing I, I forget exactly but the helicopter flew up but right before it did Batrock leapt out of the yeah also kind of like that Falcon you know he, he went on to one of the wingsuit people and they like pulled his chute to get you know to yeah to, to get rid of him I feel like, has someone else done that in the MCU? Or maybe it's a different movie that I'm thinking of. But yeah, it's, you know, it's a clever move. He's not going to be able to fight Falcon when Falcon's in the, the Falcon suit when, while he is, like, slowly approaching the ground. You know, and there are military on the ground, so they can just pick up the guy. Or they could, they could at least try, you know. It's possible that it'll be too... Ah, what's the word? Too hard to predict exactly where it's going to land. And they were near a border, so. There was no drone attack. There was a very unfortunate drone malfunction. And, 
Yeah, and we're told the Flag Smashers believed it was better during the blip. They want a world unified without borders. That does make a lot of sense. Borders do lead to a lot of problems. I'm not personally in favor of zero borders, but I do think there is a lot that needs to be done to make it... When, when, when there are literal refugees coming to your borders, it is extremely important that you treat them humanely. Now, and people don't know where Steve is, but there are rumors. One of these right people said they wouldn't have brought that up if we're not going to find something out that, you know, if, if it's not going to be a major plot point. That that very well could be. I, I don't, you know, it, it is kind of, a, you know, I heard he's on a base on the moon. And, and as one of the Easter egg people pointed out, I mean, Fury's in space, Monica's going to be in space soon, and very likely, should I go by, I, I guess maybe I, just in case, I should call her Carol Danvers now, since it's possible that Captain, Apparently, Captain Marvel 2 will have three Captains Marvel, which I'm here for it. I'm so, that's that's awesome, you know, but I mean, I guess Monica is very likely going to go by Photon, since that was her mother's call sign, and I believe Ms. Marvel is going to keep going as Ms. Marvel in that movie, not only her mini-series, but... Yeah, really loving how diverse the MCU is getting. It was about time. And Falcon gives a speech and Rhodey is there. It, I, I really liked it. It's this this thing of, yeah, you know, the the it's difficult. Everyone is now going to have to accept that Steve Rogers isn't there anymore. You know, and whether, whether it's the moon, whether people think he's dead, I don't think he's dead personally, but I could imagine it's like he retired and, you know, it's not impossible we'll see him down the line, but I, I personally, Chris Evans has given so much for the MCU. I think it's perfectly acceptable for him to, at the very least, take a break and maybe just actually retire you know he's it's it's wild how many years he's had to keep up that shape how many movies he's appeared in all these action scenes i mean for us you know it's it's two hours of action scene you know every, every you know sometimes it's several years in a row sometimes it's once per two or three years but for him he has to keep doing these action scenes for hours on end for days on end, you know, it's, I am, I am 100% okay with him taking a break, that is, yeah, but the, the, yeah, you know, the, again, that was, you know, Endgame started the, you know, it got, it got the ball rolling, and now we're watching the ball still roll, Endgame set up the the chess match and now we're seeing the pieces move you know endgame established you know the end of endgame the game end of endgame which i was game for although it ending i'm gonna stop yeah you know the the, the end game the last scene with yeah the, the scene with old steve you know we it's being set up he's He's going to retire, you know, and we can really understand why he feels the, the need to. And the, uh, one second, lost my train of thought. It shouldn't be hard to recover because it's a train. It takes up a lot of space. It makes noise. Yeah, you know, Endgame establishes Stevie's going to have to retire. And there is that thing, you know, he hands over the shield to Falcon and, like, Falcon, Falcon and Bucky both basically accept that, you know, Steve is retiring, but there is this sense of, you know, what is, what exactly are they going to, you know, and, but, but yeah, you know, the fact that this show 
continues to shriek. Again, I'm I'm really relieved that they're they're taking these these seriously because what would happen? You know, he's represented America for years, and then there were years where he was on the run from the government, and you know, it's yeah, you you can't just have someone else put on the uniform, which is of course why John Walker putting on the uniform or yeah. A different uniform but wielding the same shield is like that's that's gonna be a bit of a conflict you know and it, yeah I, I saw at least one of the Easter egg people suggest that by the end of this miniseries Torres will be the new Falcon I could see that now I really like that Right, right, and I'll just briefly say, yeah, Falcon gives them the shield, and it's put in this glass box, and it is this sense that, you know, there won't be a Captain America for a while. And the, right, and also, you know, apparently down the line in these, in this miniseries, we're gonna see the, I, did they call him the Black Captain America? I, I forget exactly, but... Isaiah Bradley, I'm sorry, sometimes I'm bad with names, but I think that's it. Really looking forward to that. And apparently Carl Lumley is going to play, you know, basically a some someone who was experimented on for Super Soldier Serum, you know, way back when. Like, I forget what the real thing that it's mirroring, the Tuskegee experiment or something like that. And... Yeah, love me some Carl Lumpley. I, I, I lumbly Carl Lumpley. And, yeah, you know, and, and him doing, like, espionage and action scenes, 100% here for it. I really like that they chose to have both Falcon and Bucky actually have gotten pardons at the start of the show. I thought that the show would start with them already on, or still on the run. I, I didn't realize they were going to do the pardon thing, but this makes it even more compelling. You know, we know that down the line, in one of these episodes, they're going to go against the government again. And considering that they're literally giving up the safety and security that they're currently living in, in, in this first episode, and I'll, I'll grant that... You know, it doesn't feel quite as, like, you could understand why they feel like, okay, yeah, I need more than this. This is not enough. You know, I can't, Falcon is dealing with his sister having to sell their parent boat, and Bucky is having these PTSD nightmares. You understand why they might want more, but it is still something substantial to give up. And the fact that they are giving it up again, instead of just, oh, they were already on the run. And, oh, there's a new Captain America, let's fight him. No, it's like th no one is trying to get rid of them. The uh, Like, okay, Sam didn't get to wield the shield, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm really, really loving that they're confronting the tremendous amount of racism there is in America head-on like this. But they weren't, like, putting him in prison like they did last time. And really, last time, like... It wasn't that much that he did, when you really think about it, you know. But the... Let's see. But but yeah, you know, the fact that Falcon and Bucky, at the start, they've gotten pardons. They're, no one is chasing them, you know. But in a, in a later episode, they're going to go on the run from the government again. So it's it's a lot to give up. It really, you know, and you can understand why... After the events of Endgame, for one thing, like, the American government was probably pretty happy that, you know, I mean, for, for the, there might be some bad blood between the American government and Falcon and Bucky, but they literally just saved, like, to be fair, the 50% of the universe were saved by Steve and the others before Falcon and Bucky came back. But if they hadn't fought so hard, if they hadn't been able to stop Thanos, 100% would be gone. You know, so, yeah, the American government was, you know, it's like, okay, you broke the law, so, so you know, we, we felt like we had to go after you, but then you saved everything, welcome back. You know, the... 
all is forgiven. And it, yeah, like, Falcon is going out doing missions by himself. Bucky is in therapy and making amends. That's basically, you know, as long as they're not, like, going around killing people that the American government doesn't want them to, the American government's probably like, this is, this is, this is a good solution. You know, they don't want to keep fighting. It's, like, it's one thing that they're like, you know, some of the people that they're chasing, it makes a lot of sense that they're still chasing them. But, yeah, and, and Bucky basically... You know, now that, like, during Civil... After the events of Winter Soldier and during Civil War and such, he was considered, like, bas I, I mean, yeah, they basically, they wanted to try to get him, like, to, to stop him. The, the American government probably saw him as a huge threat. And so, you know, once Steve... Yeah, you know, he basically, he, he refused to let Bucky just be handed over to, yeah. Now, let's see. And Rhodey suggests that he and Falcon take a walk, presumably not on the wild side. And Rhodey directly asks Sam, why didn't you take up the mantle? And it's, I, I really like that, you know, I mean, there's been some conflict between them in, in Civil War, you know, but the, the, I mean, at the end of the day, they're both, they're, well, I guess, yeah, let's see, technically, I gotta remember, Falcon, let's see, Falcon left the military, so he was a veteran, although now he's sort of back in the military, so I guess, is it still called veteran if you're still in the military? I guess, no, that, that's, like, you're still, I, I know you're, I'm not expecting a verbal response, put it in the comments if you know, I'm thinking out loud. Is what I'm, but anyway, the you know they both were in the military, and basically, Rhodey stayed in the military because he still felt like it made a lot of sense. Where Sam kind of felt like you know it just it doesn't make sense anymore. I lost my wingman, and you know so so when the Sokovia Accords came around, like Sam was like, well, you know, Amer the American government didn't have my back when I left the military and now they want to they want to control me again and they're just gonna force this on me you know we we don't know ex I, I don't think we've been told but I could imagine that Sam uh, let's see I mean they don't have the draft in America as far as I know so basically Sam signed up for being in the military and yeah he kind of expected well when, you know, once I leave the military, you know, the, 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 the American government is going to try to keep funding the VA so that can help. And they really haven't, been, you know, that hasn't been said on the, in the MCU so far. But, you know, there's, there's a clear implication that Sam isn't, excuse me, like he, he wasn't hugely against the idea of taking down S.H.I.E.L.D., Yes, he knew it was Hydra by the time, you know, but still, that's a pretty big thing to go up against. Now, and Rhodey points out, the world is broken, everyone is looking for someone to fix it. And we get this flashback of Bucky attacking and killing people in the past. I, I really, it's, it's such a great, you know, right before he kills the target, he goes, hail Hydra. And... One of the Easter egg people pointed out it's possible that he said that to Howard Stark right before killing him, really pouring salt in that wound and twisting the knife, you know, just, yeah. And the, let's see. Really loving that we get his theme music again, which, you know, I, it, it wasn't very long ago that I rewatched the, yeah, Captain America 2, and it really, it, it holds up. I mean, okay, yeah, it's only been seven years. Still, that movie is amazing. I've seen it a dozen times by now in, yeah, like I said, less than seven years, but it, it just keeps, it's, it's incredible. I, yeah. 
and Bucky has a very, or it's the Winter Soldier has a very distinct, like it's, this, the, the theme music, it sounds, yeah, I'm, I'm not good at explaining music, but yeah, it has this kind of harsh tone, you know, instrumentation thing going on, and it just, it's, it's very threatening and aggressive, you know, it's, it's, yeah, and I'm really loving hearing that again. And apparently it was, you know, it, it's very similar, but it's not the exact same piece of music. They brought the composer back and had him do one that fit this scene because it's not, you know, and, and that is a thing. Like, if the scene is not paced like the other ones and you try to use the same music, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb, you know. Not going to lie, I'm really glad we finally see him actually... Actually, kill people since for a super assassin, other than during Endgame and Infinity War, we haven't really seen him kill, like, okay, he kills a few people on screen in Captain America 2, but almost everyone he goes up against, you know, he didn't kill Steve, thankfully, he didn't kill, kill Fury, again, thankfully, you know, we, we really, I, okay, let's see, he, he throws a grenade at some people and kills them. Yeah, okay, yeah, to be fair, he kills a few people in, near the end of that. I think maybe also the, he felt more like he, he's basically reacting to Steve going in with, with Sam, Natasha, Fury, and, I can't believe I'm blanking on a name, but the, uh, How I Met Your Mother, that, you know, Co uh, Co Smulders, Colby Smulders, or some, something like that. You know, he was, yeah, basically... He was there to, to, and I mean, the fact that he didn't kill Fury, I get that it's plot armor, but still, he had several chances to, you know, he's, he's running around with this massive, I, th I think it's the 50 cal shotgun, we, the sniper, not shotgun, which I'm almost certain you cannot, I, I don't think, like, if you try to shoot off someone's ear, the, the bullet is so, like, it, it would, I don't think you can actually shoot that directly at a person and not kill them with it but anyway it without missing them i mean but anyway and and you know he's he blows up the car that fury's in anyway in this he's going after a target he's being an asset oh sorry and obviously in 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 civil war in the flashback of course but there he didn't have that big like he he crashed their car and at that point they were you know it was like taking candy from a bleeding dying old man but in this, he's going at, like, some of the people try to run, and he just, like, throws, like, throwing knives at them, and just, and this poor guy, you know, there at the end, it's like, I didn't see anything, you know, and he's trying, he, he can't, he's, he's there with his keys, he's trying to get into, and Bucky gets out the, the pistol and just shoots him, and the, the, and he wakes up, and it's, you know, PTSD nightmare, and that is the thing, you know, the, for, for those who may not know, people who have, you know, for example, been in the military, but people who have killed someone will have PTSD flashbacks, including in their sleep, and they'll, they'll wake up, and, and they'll, like, they'll feel like they were back there killing them again, and it's, it's a very, I don't know from personal experience, don't worry, but for, you know, the, the, the literature on the subject says that unless you're a sociopath, and of course some people are, but most of the people who are in military, for example, are not sociopaths, and it does take a toll on you. It it feels very unnatural. It like it's it's like our brain has a hard time come like coming to terms with killing another person. You know, it feels fundamentally wrong, and it's basically it's it's evolution, you know, saying. Don't kill anyone. If you start killing people, the, the species is going to die out soon, you know, so. And, yeah, it, you know, the, the him waking up from this nightmare is an excellent way of telling us where his head is at. Show, don't tell. Literally, this is what he, you know, and, and again, you know, one of the Easter egg po people pointed out, this is following up on, you know, near, near the very end of Civil War. Tony confronts, you know, verbally confronts, he's already physically confronting him, and he says, do you even remember them? 
And Bucky responds, I remember all of them. And that's the, yeah, he's still remembering all these people that he killed under mind control. And it's, yeah. And, and again, like, the movies, I, I don't think the flashback would have quite fit into one of the movies, you know. And Bucky has been given a pardon, but it's conditional on him talking to the therapist, including about the nightmares and such. And again, it makes a lot of sense. That's like, he's an incredibly skilled killer. He spent most of his life killing. He spent longer, you know, he's been killing for more years than most people have been alive. You know, okay, there are some people who grow to, to be that age, but still, you know, he, like, he started killing people in, sometime in the 40s, and, you know, 70 years later, he's still killing people, and, you know, the, okay, so the mind control is gone, but what if he, like, I mean, I mean, it's still, it's, you know, mind control being gone, that's a big plus, but if he, like, what if he snaps, that, it, even without mind control, he's still extremely dangerous, and the government, you know, they're they're okay with giving him pardon, but they need to be sure that he's not suddenly gonna start killing people again. And excellent therapies, and you know, oh, don't bring out the pad; it's so passive aggressive. You don't talk, I write. And they go over the three rules, which are not never open the package and. and never alter the deal anyway but but yeah it's a it's a great like let's see yeah they they go over the rules and we see this brief you know it cuts back and forth between the, the therapist and him you know doing this you know making amends and you know it's it's this thing of we know what he's done we're we're seeing it play out now but he's not telling the therapist exactly what he did because he did break the rules, you know. He, you know, you can't do anything illegal. Nobody gets hurt. I think the third one was actually, yeah. Sorry, the third one he didn't break. The third one he did actually follow. The, you know, I'm not the Winter Soldier anymore. I'm Bucky Barnes, and I'm making amends. It's not something like that. You have to say that to the people that he's making amends to, and. I, I like that, you know, rule number two, nobody gets hurt. It's a big one. Then why isn't it rule one? <laughs> and it's like, it's true. A lot of people in therapy get kind of hostile towards the therapist because at first therapy feels like, you know, if in order to, to help someone's mental health, it's almost impossible to do without poking at least a little, or not, sorry, that makes it sound... No, like, in order to help with someone's mental health issues, you know, the, the something that our mind just kind of does if we're not trying to improve our mental health, but we have problems, we kind of just push them down, and mental health treatment involves digging some of it back up, and at first it's painful, you know, so some people get very hostile towards it, and, you know, we're, we're seeing that, but they're also making it maybe not not laugh out loud funny but a little amusing kind of yeah and yeah Bucky is making amends like a recovering alcoholic but because the stuff he did to hurt people was super soldier stuff he's getting people arrested that he helped get into power amazing I love it and it's just yeah and and again it's such like it makes perfect sense I really I love how much the MCU cares about character and continuity you know I I I get that the MCU is not for everyone, and, you know, if you're not, if it's not for you, I'm not going to force you to watch it, but it really rewards going, you know, following all the way. This, it feels like something that, th th yeah, this is basically something that Bucky has needed for a long, long time, and there was never really a chance for him to get it before, and... You know, part of that is also that he didn't have, you know, he didn't have a starring role in Disney Plus show before. But now it is, yeah. And Bucky has been ignoring the texts from Sam, and, you know, the therapist points out, you need to connect with other people. You know, you can't push everyone away. And he and Sam do have things in common. You know, and 
Bucky says, I had a little calm in Wakanda. Other than that, I just went from one fight to another for 90 years. And yeah, you know, it really, it would take a toll on you and it would be extremely difficult to break back out of, you know, so yeah. But, but yeah, the whole thing with, you know, he got the, when he worked for Hydra, he got her, this, this female senator into power. And now she's trying to use the power that he gave her. You know, S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA have fallen, but she's still out there. You know, not everyone was taken down by that. And so he puts in, like, a, like some kind of microphone thing so that they, you know, can record her saying something, uh, what's it called, incriminating. And, you know, he goes up to the window, as we were being told, rule number two is don't hurt anyone. And, he, you know, he said, I, I didn't hurt anyone. And he, like... Let's. I think, yeah, he, you know, the guy had a gun or something, so he, like, crushed it with his hand still holding it or some, something. I, yeah, it was, it was really, really cool. And just, the, it's, it's such a, you know, the contrast where at the end, you know, he, he, like, I, I forget if he sticks his head through the wind, you know, it's, yeah, of the, the open window. I mean, not, not, like, breaking through the glass, but... Or, or if he just looks through, but he's like, I'm no longer the Winter Soldier, I'm Bucky Barnes, and I'm making amends. And it's just, it's, you know, they, the, the MCU lighten the blow by having this humor around it, but it is like, you know, Steve had a list of things, you know, fun things to catch up on. You know, oh, he's going to go watch Star Wars and Star Trek for the first time, you know. But Bucky has a list of people that he... He either hurt these people, people who care about them, or he helped these people by hurting other people. You know, it's very, yeah, and 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 that's another thing. Like when he was with Steve, they could at least talk about it because Steve had a ton of empathy for Bucky and everyone, really, almost everyone, and he really tries to help people. And I think the therapist does want to help him, but she is also, she does have to be a little bit of a rule Nazi and say, you have to follow the rules. But we, we really can't have this, you know, I mean, and, and he knows, you know, he was, they, they tried to put him in this electrified cell thing, which I'm not going to go off on a rant about that. Sometimes it frustrates me that people say how could he open the 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 cell because the power was cut he couldn't open it when the power was on we don't uh, yeah yeah i was about to say we don't know but no actually we don't see it but the ah the hobbit tells zemo at the end touch the glass zap so yeah it it may very well be you know that Bucky would have to go back into that now that oh actually yeah we don't know if Zemo is still in in the cell at this point in the show great use of close-ups during the therapy scene it is truly inescapable you know it's it's a great way I mean they're literally I don't know five meters apart in the room but the camera yeah you know he can't get away from it it's it's and Bucky prevents a fight between his friend and the friend's neighbor. And they have one of those jokes about people who, ah, you know, who, who change their name to, to make it really, like, different and such. And Bucky doesn't want to ask out the woman serving them food, so Yuri does it for him, and she agrees that it was kind of a neat little... And it's, it's a thing, you know, some, like, one of, I, I know a few elderly people, and one of them told me very directly, when you get older, you no longer have any shame. You just don't, it's just, you know, there are so many things that you can't, like, you, you can't move quite as fast, you can't lift quite as much. Some things just have to go and shame is one of them and yeah you know it's I say it with love I'm not judging but yeah you know this guy is 
I, and I mean, the, the, I, th I think Yori, I mean, in his mind, it's like, dude, I don't know if I'm going to be alive tomorrow. I might die in my sleep tonight. Go on a date. You know, live your life while you have a chance, you know. And, you know, at first I had guessed that Yori is like a World War II veteran from Japan. And so the two of them have stuff in common, like how Steve was with American World War II vets in Age of Ultron in the party scene. And, yeah, and at the end of the, the scene of them getting food, they play a little of the Winter Soldier theme. It, you know, it's hard for Bucky to ignore his past. And Falcon goes to visit some of his family, and some of them literally call him Uncle Sam, which is a, is a great, like, I'm not 100% certain if he's also a an uncle in the comics, but... You know, he is called Sam Wilson in the comics as well. It is, you know, you are meant to think of him as, to some extent, you know, he... As far as I understand, even when they wrote the comics, there was this sort of idea of him also representing America. Now, let's see. And Falcon argues with his sister over selling the fishing boat. She lived through the blip, and it was difficult for her. I like the little bit about, like, the, let's see, actually, yeah, yeah, never mind, I'll get to it, and, you know, she says, every day, I'm making five and spending ten, and that's, yeah, there are, sadly, a lot of people who live paycheck to paycheck, and can, can't keep it up, they're not going to be able to, you know, and I really appreciate this show shining a light on that and shining a light of on how a number of them are black black women you know it's and and the the i'm not did they say what happened to her husband i'm i'm not entirely sure but you know if she only has if it's a single income household and she has kids to feed it's going to be extremely difficult and there's just the I, I want to say it was Some More News, the, the Cody Johnson show. He pointed out that poor people, I think he specifically talked about homeless people, but today in America, a lot of, like, homeless in America today can just mean, well, you worked as hard as you could. You, you, you know, you for a while you just barely made ends meet, and then eventually you didn't have money to get by, and now you're homeless. It's not that you did something wrong, you know. And I really appreciate that here we're, you know, we really empathize with her. I'm I'm sorry, I don't. Sarah, I think Sarah was her name. I'm sometimes really bad with names, but the um, yeah, I I really appreciate that. Now, let's see, and and. You know, this thing of he wants to swoop in and just save the day because that's kind of what, you know, he, he identifies himself. His, his identity is, ah, let me think. I got to phrase it right. In his own mind, his identity is someone who swoops in and saves people who couldn't get by without him, basically. You know, and so he tr he's trying to do that for his family now, and she points out, you feel guilty, you weren't here, you know, you went off to the military, and it was just me and our parents, and it, that wasn't enough, you know, it was very hard for those years, and, you know, now that he also, excuse me, you know, he's, he's doing in, he's doing some, he's doing some military contracts, sure, but he's not, a, you know, he's not a main member of the military anymore. And once he felt that he no longer wanted to be in the military, at that point, you know, I, I figure he probably already then started to feel guilty and think, I wasn't there to help my sister and our parents, and I left for this, and now they betray me? Again, VA, for example, 
And then he went off to be an Avenger because, again, he felt like this is somewhere I can do some good. And again, it fell apart. You know, the there are no Avengers right now. There is no team of Avengers right now. And yeah, it's you know, he's he's he didn't mean to leave people behind to fend for themselves, but he thought that he was doing good, and now he's maybe starting to question that. Which again goes very nicely along with that he he doesn't feel worthy of the shield. You know, maybe he feels like Steve wouldn't have made these mistakes. And, you know, she like, she, she hits him in, in the chest or something. And he's like, God, how hard you hit. And it's, it's kind of amusing as a, you know, that's a, that's a very realistic sibling relationship. And it's just, it's just kind of funny to hear a guy like, we, dude, ten minutes ago, you were dodging missiles that were locked on you, you know, and, and now you're complaining, but what it is, you know, because he wasn't ready for it. It's, it's one thing when, when you're like, you know, mentally, I'm, I'm going to fight, I'm going to, you know, but then he didn't expect her to hit him. And yeah, and Sarah already tried getting a loan from the bank. Let's see, and... Yeah, you know, they're behind big business. That's how the reality is for a lot of people in America. I really love that we're seeing people close to Sam and Bucky and seeing them try to be normal. And I like the line, So, have you dated much since half the fish in the sea came back? Which, you know... It's it's a it's a dating you know it's it's that metaphor of there are plenty of fish in the sea and now half the fish of the sea came back and there you know she likes I don't know if she also prepares it but she at least serves seafood so that kind of yeah and he is struggling with what he shouldn't tell the girl and keeping up with the modern world and you know there's there's that thing of like I don't think I wrote it here in my notes but. You know, there's that thing. She asks, what's the deal with the gloves? And we know what the deal is with the gloves. And he has to, like, kind of think, you know, what is he going to say? One of my arms is made of the most rare metal on earth because for almost a hundred years, I was an assassin for one of the most evil organizations in the history of mankind. He's not going to say that. Not on a first date. So he just says, I have bad circulation. You know, it's, it's a nice little, yeah. And, and, you know, she's like, I'm reading your mind. And he's like, please don't. And it's because they're playing Battleship. That's, you know, what she meant. But obviously Bucky is terrified of the idea of other people realizing what's in his mind. And there's also... Something I hadn't picked up on, but one one of the Easter egg people pointed out, he's also, he he cannot have other people inside his head, like how Hydra was with the brainwashing for all those, if, again, for almost a hundred years. And, yeah, it's it's an incredibly lonely experience to genuinely fear other people realizing what you're thinking. And... The, as the Easter egg people pointed out, the they basically the, you know they borrow a line from what was it called six feet under or maybe just six feet I, I forget, but you know the thing about you know there if if you lose a husband or wife you're a widower widower. If you lose your parents you're an orphan, but there's no word for someone whose kids died because it's the worst thing that can happen and. You know, we, we realize Yori is the father, was the father of the the guy that he killed in the flashback. You know, so he's trying to break it to Yori that, you know, I'm the one that kills your son. And it's, it's, it's a really, excuse me, it's, it's a, yeah, very, very intelligent and very compelling 
things to show to explore. And, you know, they're apparently playing a version of Battleship where every time you... Every time the other player hits one of your ships, or every time you miss when going after their ships, you have to take a sip. Uh, uh, yeah, you have to drink some beer. And she's like, oh, wow, you sure know how to drink or something like that, because he only takes the tiny little sip. And, you know, yeah, he doesn't like drinking very much at the same time. I get the sense that he's scared of lowering his guards, of his inhibitions being lowered. You know, maybe he would end up admitting something that would be a terrible thing to say out loud, you know, and just, I, I really appreciate how in this episode, from start to finish, Bucky is on guard everywhere except the flashback. You know, in the flashback, he's in his element. He is amazing. He's doing exactly the right, but for the rest of the episode, he's trying to keep the truth from the therapist. He's trying to, you know... The, the the yeah, trying you know he's he's he can he can socialize okay with Yori himself, but then Yori starts talking about that you know he should ask you know Bucky should ask out the girl, and then when Bucky doesn't, he asks her out on his behalf, and you know and then he's on the date and all this stuff. It just he can't yeah ev everywhere he goes every all the time he's he's having to be careful and let's see what was the other thing that I wanted to say I, I like the bit with you know there's this cat thing that like does this with the paw like a like a ah, what's it called like a toy kind of thing and you know he's he doesn't like that it keeps doing that so he puts his hand up and tries to put it up and it stands still for like a second and then it starts moving a little and you know, one of, one of the Easter egg people called it a cat fight, which was kind of funny. But yeah, it's this thing of, like, he just needs things to stand still around him. He can't have, you know, basically every every time something starts moving, it 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 brings up something painful. And, and one of the Easter egg people also pointed out, you know, basically Bucky and Yori are bonding over the... the Ah, what are they called? The I don't remember what they're called. The the um, the part of the paper that lists the people that have died recently. And let's see. Yeah, and we see he cannot come out and tell Yori that that you know he killed his son. And it really like it must. I've never experienced it. I've never had kids. Never will have kids. But the yeah, must be one of the worst things you can imagine. Like, again, not not having been a parent myself, you know, becoming a parent, you're basically you're trying to make sure that your your lineage lives on. You know, and and some people prefer that to be like literally their own you know, their own flesh and blood have, you know, some people adopt, you know, in, in both cases, I think, you know, it, it, it takes a lot to be a parent. So I have a ton of respect for people who, you know, who, who become parents because they genuinely believe they can be a good parent to the, their child. But then if that child dies, you know, and I know some people would be like, well, can he just have another one? Well, what if the other one also dies? You know, some people have actually experienced losing a lot of children. It, for just this one thing, women used to lose a lot of children in childbirth. That's part of why, like, if, you know, I, I don't remember the exact quote. Let's see. Be fruitful and multiply or something. It's, it's in the Bible. And that's not just because, like, when they wrote the Bible, they were like, dude, everyone should have 10 kids because then there's 10 kids to help around the house. No, they were like, if everybody has 10 kids, at least two or three of them might survive. And that's, I don't, I don't think that's even an exaggeration. I read about that, the, you know, years ago. I haven't, I haven't accessed that piece of memory for some time now, but 
I think it's something along those lines. There were women who became pregnant ten times, and because conditions were so poor, general health was so poor, most of them died in childbirth. Imagine what that's like. Imagine just over and over, you know. I mean, it's it's nine months of your life that you're carrying this baby, and then they don't survive. And you, for the rest of your life, you know, the, the love, the connection you felt with that baby is just gone. You know, or you, you can't express it towards another person, and it keeps reminding you that you lost something. So, yeah, lo losing children must be just about the, the most painful thing. And, yeah, it, it really, the, the, you know, it's, it's not the first time we see Bucky be confronted with someone where he killed, you know, he, he killed Tony's parents. But, so it's, it's not the first time that he's confronting someone where he killed someone extremely close to them. But it clearly is still something that's extremely difficult for him. You know, it's not... He, he can't just like I've, I've heard some people that they felt that they, they had to they had to turn down someone they, they worked in a bank and they had to turn down someone who needed a loan really badly and they started just being rude to people so that the people would hang up as soon as she said no I can't give you a loan instead of saying but we really need a loan and having to spend minutes having to say no over and over he can't he can't do that yet you know he can't yeah, like, like you know, he, he can't look Yori in the eyes and say, I killed your son. I, did, I, I didn't want to do it, but I killed him. Goodbye, and just turn around and walk away and try to get away before, like, you know, if it, I, I wouldn't blame Yori if he, like, tried to slug him or something, you know, but he, he can't do that. He's still, it hurts too much. I'm not blaming Bucky for not being able to do it. I'm saying... You know, it, it really, it is, I mean, he is basically stuck. He's he's trying to make amends, but he keeps, like, it's it's like he's trying to crawl out of mud. You know, he, no, it, it seems like no matter how much, okay, maybe mud, quicksand, he's, he's struggling against quicksand. No matter how much he struggles, he just can't seem to get out of it. Falcon's relationship with his sister and her kids is very credible. And we see that, ah, Torres, right? It's, I, I briefly wanted to mention, you know, the, the scene where Torres said, you know, is, is Steve Rogers on the moon? You know, we, we find out that one of the, you know, occasionally someone comes up and recognizes Sam and says, you helped save my spouse, you know. And Torres is, you know, he, he set the, the phone to record and he hit it. And it's, it's a really, you know, that, that, is, that is a thing today. If, if you think there's going to be something very dangerous, you know, it's, I mean, it, it especially makes me think of people who film, you know, peaceful protests. But, you know, that it's, it's not completely that situation. And, you know, he finds, yeah, he uses, like, augmented reality, is that what it's called? Something. But he finds the, the Flag Smasher thing, you know, and one of the Easter egg people said it's like a sort of V for Vendetta flash mob, and that's, that's, that's cute, yeah. And, yeah, the, you know, they put on Flag Smasher masks, and one of them has the bags of money, and... You know, Taurus sees this one guy who's like superhumanly fast and strong, and for some reason he's like, "You're under arrest," and he thinks that's gonna work, that's gonna go well. But you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, I mean, they they kind of needed the scene to end without him being, like, if he if he tried to follow the Flag Smashers, then he might have more information than the writers kind of can allow him to have at this point in the story so they needed a way to get him out of there and him being over i mean he did just survive something insane because of falcon so 
maybe he's like really still hyped up on that kind of yeah. Now let's see. And the banker recognizes Falcon. How can you have income if you don't exist? And I like that we're finally getting the answer to that question that people have been wondering for a long time. How do the MCU get by? Do they earn a living wage? You know, do and apparently, in the, like in the comics, Tony does pay the the members, but apparently that wasn't the case in the in in the MCU, as at least according to this episode. And that, I mean, I could see that it is a. I mean. When you were an Avenger, you got room and board. I could imagine that Tony might... And, you know, if, if you wanted something expensive, if it was for your suit, Tony would hook you up, you know. So I, I can imagine Tony would, would be like, why, why do you need to be paid? You have room, board, I'll make whatever addition to your, you know, to your outfit that you want me to. You know, I mean... And we know his parties are off the wall so you know occasionally there's even a robot attack during them and yeah Sam is trying to rescue his sister the writing is incredibly authentic you can tell that at least some of the people writing the relationship between Sam and Sarah and her kids actually are black and have experience with how you're treated in America if you're black and not rich and the relationships between family members for struggling black people And I, I really appreciate the thing of, like, this is, I mean, obviously Sam has had uh, conflicts before, in, you know, in the movies, but those conflicts were not, you know, the, the you know, how, how do, I mean, he himself can get by on this show, currently on the, you know, ah. Uh, what are they called? Military contracts, but he can't do anything to help his sister out, you know, and that's, yeah, it's a, it's a reality. There are a lot of people who have problems, even though they have, you know, even, even though their family members are really talented or, you know, can do whatever they can to help out. There are still some people who can't because of how capitalism holds down the people who aren't already rich and powerful. And I really appreciate that this is, you know, exploring that. And Falcon is re-watching the footage that Torres got, slowing it down so he can even see all that is happening at all. And he talks to Torres about realization, about the flag, smashers. And we have that bit of, like, Torres asks Sam, do you think they are, and Sam interrupts him, and we don't know what he's going to say, you know, is he going to say a super soldier like Bucky, is he going to say enhanced, you know, and it's not impossible that he's going to say mutant, but we really got to not, by the end of WandaVision, I came to terms with that it might be, you know, gotta, gotta be careful. I wasn't like completely crushed with disappointment, but we gotta be careful not to get our hopes up too much that we're gonna see the mutants soon. Mutants and X-Men and such. Anyway, X-Men and other mutants is what I'm saying. And Sam sees the announcement of John Walker and clearly when the words being spoken are needs someone to represent all of us he knows that one of the reasons that he himself didn't get asked to be that is that he's black i didn't realize this was going to be how they introduced how they first introduced john walker i think i kind of kind of assumed that the first time we saw him would be that like was it super bowl game or whatever you know football game whatever and you know like 
they would be showing the football game and then like, oh, halftime show. And then he runs, you know, he's like high-fiving a, a black guy and, you know. But this is a really strong intro. And yeah, I absolutely 100% unreservedly love it. The moment that you see John Walker carrying Steve Rogers' shield, it feels like sacrilege. Like, it feels like he's just, yeah. And when you see his face, you can immediately tell he is not humbled like Steve is. He kind of looks like a rock star. He's per he's showing off. He's proud to be chosen as a new symbol of America in the wrong way, for the wrong reasons. Not because he's humble and believes he can do it, because he's full of himself. This is an ego boost. You know, he's, he's looking forward to hitting the bars and the clubs and being like, sup ladies, I'm the new Captain America. Yeah, I got a shield. You know, and just, yeah. The actor is already really, really selling it for me. I, you know, I don't know him from anything, but he's Kurt Russell's son. Kurt Russell is one of the most charismatic people on earth. So the fact that, you know, I'm 100% certain that Wyatt Russell is also incredibly charismatic and he's using his acting talent to completely turn off that charisma and just be like, it's just, oh, he's so obnoxious. You just, you hate him from the first frame you see him. Just the, yeah. And it is like, I mean, you could kind of understand how he and the government think that this is a win. You know, he's not like Sam in that he's not black. They believe they can control him, you know. So they're, they're like, this is, this is exactly it. You know, this is just, yeah. And yeah, like with WandaVision, I am really, really loving seeing what these characters who could only be supporting characters in the big movies are like when things are a bit more quiet, when they're not in big action scenes or only being shown based on the way they are in relation to, for example, Steve Rogers. And let's see. Right, and the, um, you know, the, yeah, the banks not really helping black people and other poor people and poor, sorry, poor black people and other poor people. And let's see. Yeah, well, of course, in reality, we're, we don't have something quite equivalent to the blip. What we're seeing in the banking scene is something that is a reality for a lot of Americans non-whites are more exposed, it does also hit some poor white people, so I really appreciate that this scene is two black people trying to get a loan. Way too often, Hollywood basically presents straight white cis men as the default, the norm, and everybody's supposed to be able to relate to them. It's a really good thing when shows show other ethnicities going through struggles. Way too many white people don't understand that they're not the only ones going through struggle. And yeah, you know, one of the Easter egg people pointed out is basically, if it sounds like basically redlining, is is one of the, yeah. And that was everything that I had written down, and it also did take a little longer than, you know, I think this might be the longest, MC, you know, Disney plus Marvel show video I've made, but actually there might be at least one. Anyway. But yeah, really loving it. Really, really excited to see, you know, I, I, you know, we still don't know exactly how, like, some people have theorized that Helmut Zemo is actually going to work with Sam and Bucky, and, you know, it's possible. And looking forward to seeing, you know, so far we don't know a lot about the Flag Smashers, but... You know, I, th I think in at least one of the trailers we see, you know, we're going to see some of them at times without mask and they're going to, like, talk about their ideology, you know. I've never had a problem with the MCU villains, but I do agree that ultimately there are not that many MCU villains 
that really like you know you can really dive deep and they're like this incredibly interesting kind of you know I've, I've yeah I've never had a problem with the with the certainly there are a number M most of the MCU villains are not as three-dimensional as some of the the very best ones are but I don't know I'm just like considering how many bad badly done X-Men villains and the Fantastic Four villains and the DCU villains just the MCU a lot of the time much much better than those and once again as of the, ah, let me think. As of Wonder Woman, not including Justice League, and I haven't watched the, the Snyder Cut of the Justice League. I know, I know. You know, send help. It's start the, start the intervention now. I'll, I'll watch it at some point. But, as of Wonder Woman, not counting Justice League, including the Snyder Cut of Justice League, the DCU has presented some really compelling films. I I love all of the movies in the DCU from Wonder Woman onwards, not including either cut of Justice League. And I really appreciate how they're, they're taking bigger chances than the MCU are. So that's really cool. But there's still some really meh villains on, in there. And I do also love a lot of the, the X-Men movies. Now, I think that is everything, so, but, but yeah, I really appreciate, there's, there's a lot of, of depth here, it's, it's really, like, again, I just, you know, when, when you think about, like, I mean, essentially, it is a mainstream action blockbuster, and when you compare it to stuff the, the, you know, mainstream action blockbusters from, like, the 80s and also some of the 90s, like, there's way more con, like, not that, not content, depth here. There, there are compelling themes. We have stuff that mirrors real-world pr problems, you know. I really appreciate that it's not just escapism. For sure there is some escapism. You know, the, the action scene with the, the, yeah, with Sam at the start of the, you know, but a lot of the time we have really intelligent, complex discussion and exploration of real life issues that impact millions of people, you know, so yeah, really, really appreciate that. And, you know, after all, it's not, you know, no one's, no one's forcing Disney to do this. I certainly some of the time they're really on, you know, they're, they're not that interested in taking big chances. But here we go, you know, the, the MCU is going and exploring some really interesting things, which, considering, like, the start of the MCU was, look at how awesome this rich, white, cis, straight man who's really sexist, who makes his money selling weapons, you know, he got rich off, like, the war in Iraq, or, yeah, okay, he was already rich, but he got even richer, you know, like, and I get the movie itself does understand that he needs to change, he needs to become a better person, but that is still, that's where we started out, and now we're talking about redlining PTSD, and, again, Tuskegee experiment might be coming up, you know, really, really glad that, yeah, that is it for this one. It was really nice to get... I, I know, it was only one week with... Or technically two weeks, or whatever. You know, last week we didn't have an episode of WandaVision or anything else Marvel on Disney+. Plus. But really, really happy that... Okay, so it's the next five weeks, I think, that we're getting... Yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoy watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.